Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. On behalf of Manila House, this is Bambina Olivares, the Director of Programming, welcoming members and non-members alike to today's online conversation about 21st century nutrition presented in partnership with Life Science Center. If this is your first time to join us online, allow me to introduce Manila House. We are a private members club that opened in February 2017 with the aim of bringing together an assemblage of people from the business, creative, cultural, and intellectual communities who are drawn to each other by a shared interest to continuously learn about art, culture, food, business, politics, and from the diversity of their fellow members themselves. It's a community of curious, committed, and caring individuals that lives on be beyond the physical confines of the club. That said, for the non-members of August, you might like to consider membership to Manila House. We have a limited number of memberships still available. Please email membership at manilahouseinc.com for more information. And please be informed that Manila House, in compliance with the allowable IATF and LGU capacities, is open for dine-in to fully vaccinated members and their guests. And we also have a takeaway services open to the public. Please call us on 0917-816-3685 to place your orders. Before we begin, just a few ground rules. This event is being recorded and live streamed and will be up on the Manila House YouTube channel in a day or two. Please use the chat box for or Q&A box for any questions and comments, and we'll get to your questions as we go along. Thank you. So, we are what we eat, it is said, but do we really understand how what we eat affects our health and well-being? As the World Health Organization has stated, nutrition is a critical part of health and development. Better nutrition is related to improved infant, child, and maternal health, and stronger immune systems, safer pregnancy and childbirth, lower risk of non-communicable diseases such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease, and longevity. We all want to live longer and healthier. How do we achieve that in the 21st century? Let's turn to life science to lead the way. So allow me to introduce today's speaker. We have with us Madeline Kalalo Jiao, who is a nutritionist, dietitian, educator with the Life Science Institute. Madi graduated cum laude from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, with a degree in community nutrition. She is a nutritionist, dietitian, educator at Life Science Institute. Her specializations include food sensitivities, gut health, and cardiovascular risk. Maddie is also a certified culinary nutrition expert. Um, Maddie, shall I turn over to you? Hello. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay, so um, thank you for having me here this afternoon. I am privileged and I feel very honored to be part of this event. And I do hope that after my talk or discussion this afternoon, you'll be able to gain a few tips on how we can be eating healthier this 21st century. So again, my name is Maddie. Thank you, Ms. Bambina, for that kind introduction. Um, and so let's begin. Okay. All right. So basically, my, my talk um, or what we'll be talking about today would be really a revolving about around food. So more than just food, it's eating food to be exact. So who here doesn't, who here gets excited whenever you hear the word food or when you're about to eat, doesn't that make you feel excited? I know I do. <laughs> For one, um, I do think about food all day because it's my job to actually think about food all day. Um, I don't know about you, but I do always get giddy and excited whenever it's time to eat. And especially if the food is, yeah, very, um, very nice like this in the picture the bite makes you want it salivate it makes you salivate and makes you really get excited right so we love food who doesn't love food <laughs> and so it, in, if you do feel the same way about food like me and you're feeling positive about food then that's a good sign that in itself gives positive signals to the brain so that you can accept food better and that would make your body digest and absorb nutrients better and get the benefits from the food. If you're the opposite, and if you're someone who dreads food, these negative um, signals can disrupt the metabolism and disrupt digestive function. You won't get to digest and absorb nutrients, and that would mess up the function of your body. So unfortunately, 
due to the work culture we have nowadays, there are people who treat food with the least priority. I've heard people by experience that they say that they eat just because it's for sustenance, that they need to not feel hungry so that they can continue on with their work. And it seems like um, eating takes so much time off their work. If you're this person, um, I don't uh, look down on you. It's okay. I actually want to commend you for your dedication to your job. But at the same time, I do want to encourage you that um, maybe it's time to actually put a higher regard to the food that you're eating. And maybe for everyone here, I would like to invite everyone today to elevate our perception of food so that we can maximize this wonderful but oftentimes neglected gift that God has given us. So like the picture says here, food is life, right? So food not is life not because it is all that life needs, diba? But food is life because literally, we need food for life to thrive. We need to nourish ourselves. So how does food nourish us? And um, I'll get deeper into this to just explore with you um, how food nourishes our body. And hopefully, this would be um, a way for us to elevate food um, in our minds, in our hearts, and, and in, our, in, our, in our whole lives. And so food is energy. And this is basic for every one of us. Food fuels our cells. It contains the necessary nutrients that helps us produce energy to do the things that we need to do. And I think everyone here has experienced having a day or a skipping a meal, right? After that, you feel pretty less energy, you feel grumpy or hangry, and it affects you very much. You won't be as productive as you're supposed to be. So food is energy, that's one, but that's only one. <laughs> Food can also be information in your body. So this is a concept that not everybody talks about. And I want to share with you that every food item that you eat actually contains information or messages that can speak directly to your bodies and tell your bodies how it will work or how it will respond. So one of those interactions could be through this, the food gene interaction. So food can alter how your genes behave. And to illustrate that more, I want to show you this graph. I know this can be a bit intimidating, but let me explain to you that this process that we see right down below, that's actually the process of creating cancer cells. And the food items that we see above, the green tea, the apples, the broccoli, the tomatoes, these are food items that can disrupt that mechanism, speak to your genes and say, stop creating that cancer cell. And so it stops the mechanism of producing cancer. And there, that's how food can speak to our bodies. Another way is that there are certain foods that can um, affect our brain. It can send signals to our body to create these happy hormones so that we can have a better mood and feel um, better about ourselves and, and our, our lives. So these food items are usually antioxidant rich and anti-inflammatory. And th so those are examples of how our food can communicate to our bodies literally in a physical and biochemical level. And there's so much at work in that, so much that we can talk about just with that communication between food and our bodies. But there's also this communication or connection between food and our emotions and our psycho psycholo psychological aspect. And so we can also say that food is connection. Food can bring us together. Right. Whenever we want to get to know someone, we ask them out, hey, let's go out for coffee, have some snacks, get to know each other. Or maybe in our family, we always have to gather at the table so that we can talk about what happened um, to the day of each one. So it's usually around food that we bond and get together. And this is where we build that social connection, that sense of belongingness, that sense of safety. And this is very important, this aspect of social connection. And there's this study called sociogenomics that, um, that looks into the connection between social connection and your genes. And it has shown there that those with high social connection have increased chances of longevity, have stronger gene expression for immunity, which is very important nowadays, have lower rates of anxiety and depression, and so many more benefits. And food can be one of the tools that we can use to strengthen this connection. And also, aside from that, I said food is emotional. So if you have that 
positive emotional connection to food, especially that you like before when you were younger, there's this food item that you had always together with your family and it comforts you, it gives you safety. That then would turn into a comfort food. And that is also a function of food for us. It tends to comfort us and give, give us that sense of um, safety, especially when we're feeling unsafe. There. So bringing all those together, food is energy, information, connection. Um, food can also become our medicine. And uh, I want to share this more by um, showing this first. So this is a picture of an immune cell. There's the big, the big one, it's the immune cell. And it's fighting off a bacteria, the orange ones, that cause tuberculosis. I'm showing this to illustrate to you that our body already has that this amazing and quite sophisticated mechanism and ability to defend and repair itself. So it's, you it's actually even better than the medications that we have present today. As long as we get to support this innate function that we have in our bodies, we, we get to heal and repair our own bodies. So that's amazing. And food comes in here as medicine because Food contains the nutrients that are needed to support this function, this wonderful immune function that we have. And all these nutrients right here, they all play a role, not just for immune system, but for the whole balance of our whole body. So think about it, every cell of your body, from the muscle, the brains, the bones, everything, they're not really created by just anything. They, they need nutrients to, to be functioning properly. They need proteins, they need fats, calcium, and all the other nutrients. So therefore, obtaining optimal health and bringing and restoring health in general has nutrition at the center of it all. So it really does need, it calls for us to pay attention to the food that we eat and ensure that we have sufficient intake of the nutrients so that we can have a healthy life, our healthy bodies. So food is fundamental for life, as we mentioned already. It's essential for life to thrive, but it also matters what kind of food, what kind of uh, nutrients are you feeding yourself for energy? What kind of information are you feeding yourself for? Uh, are, you, are you feeding your body? What kind of connections are we creating? And is the food that we're eating really medicine? So um, I'm there. here are statistics that show us that lately, since uh, the la latest statistics are from 2019, and it shows here that the highest risk factor for most death and disability combined is actually food-related or diet-related. So 80% actually of the causes, the top causes. So we have high blood pressure, malnutrition, dietary risks, um, blood sugar levels, high body mass, kidney dysfunction, alcohol use, and high cholesterol. So those are all related to your diet, right? So uh, we, we need to pay attention what kind of food are we feeding ourselves this 21st century? Is the food that we eat something that would fulfill the needs of our bodies? So let's try to see. Um, a few years ago, when I first did this talk, I did try to see the trend of um, what, what people have been eating um, last 2018s. So this was pre-pandemic. And I noticed that the trends then were like these um, bulk uh, consumption of meats through the samgyupsal, and then you have buckets of um, chocolate chip cookies, uh, milk tea. I found this store that sold one liter milk tea. We have donuts everywhere, and everybody just go here because this is, this is a trend. This was the trend, and usually that time when we see a certain food, we indulge in it. We we really dive into it, right? Um, and until now, I think I still see this around, especially since we're opening up <laughs> the, the doors to, to eat inside um, restaurants and all that. So these are already back in, uh, in, in the field, right? So I tried to see what came up during the lockdown and pandemic. So 2021 food trends turned out to be um, just a varied other more choices of these food items. But um, if you're going to really study them and look at the nutritive value of these food, they really, they really aren't much nutrients in these food. And um, these are usually caloric dense and contain a lot of inflammatory food items as well, like sugar, gluten, and dairy. And um, with the lockdown as well, food deliveries have made it easier to access these foods. So we don't, don't have to cook anymore. They just, we just click our buttons on our phone and then the food arrives, right? Um, 
so that's what that's how it has been Let, let's try to assess that how was it for you <laughs> how was your food trend this past few months to be fair though um, i've seen some trends leading towards a more health conscious way of eating and maybe some people have already realized the value of food and how it affects health and so there were these plant-based um, trends uh, starting to elevate and i hope that more of these healthy uh, food uh, trends will pick up um, moving forward so well what what i'm coming into here is whatever food trend you find yourself in it's always good for us to evaluate ourselves um, when it comes to our food choices if we are we driven by instinct like how a caveman just dives into a food that he just caught or saw and and really just um, gulps everything down like this guy over here mr bean <laughs> Or are we driven by intellect where we make conscious decisions of what we eat? Let's think about that. Instinct or intellect? Now, we live in the 21st century. Information is available everywhere. Information is very much accessible. And by now, um, we probably know to some extent what is healthy and what is not, right? We know that vegetables are good for us. We know that too much sugar is not okay for our bodies. Um, we know that. We know that already. So more than just teaching you right now what exactly you are to eat, maybe um, I would like to explore with you more on how we should be eating rather than what to eat. And this how, let this how be what would drive you to better eating and better choices of, of food. So um, to go straight to the point, the how, the how to eating is really a practice of mindfulness. We need to eat mindfully. And yes, nutritious eating begins with the mind. You need to think more about your food. And that involves knowing your purpose for your food. Why are you eating? Knowing what kinds of food will meet your needs. What are your needs and what kind of food will meet your needs? And also knowing how to get the best benefits out of your food. And we'll talk more about that in a bit. But of course, after knowing all these, you should act on it. So I'll leave the acting part or doing part to you. For now, let me share with you a few tips on how we can cultivate the practice of mindfulness with our food. Okay. So the first step really is to know where you're at. Where are you right now? This involves, again, knowing your goals, knowing your purpose for eating. Why, are you, why do you want to eat healthier in the first place? And the next is to pay attention and identify areas for improvement when it comes to your eating habits. What are you doing now that's, that's not really um, moving you forward towards your goal? If you don't know yet, we're sending out the tool right here that I'm showing in front of you. It's a short questionnaire that you can answer. Um, and there's a scoring system there to see if you have great habits or if you need improvements with your habits. Um, and, and this is great already as a way to also see specific things that you can start doing um, and changing in your lifestyle. So it's nice to be aware of your tendencies so you know where to start. If you don't know, if you're not aware of yourself, you wouldn't really know how to start changing, right? So, so once you get to know it, know them, know your tendencies, acknowledge them, accept them, consider them, and even forgive yourself for making those or doing those actions. And then make a decision to break away from them. Think about the things that you need to support you in order to overcome the obstacles that you are facing um, from doing the, the good habits that, that you said you'd do. Okay, so know where you're at. The second is know what's in your food. And this is directly related to food already. So know what's in your food. I, I encourage everyone here to go visit your kitchen right away after this talk and look at the ingredients in your in the label in your in your food items. Read the ingredients, read the nutrients. And things that we want to look for when we look at the nutrition facts is that we want to have very little of the fat, the cholesterol, the sodium, and even the sugars right here. So we want them to be 5% or less. That's the cutoff. When it comes to sugar, I want to highlight here that um, five grams of sugar, that's five grams of sugar, is equal to a teaspoon of sugar. So based on this example, which is a commercial fruit juice drink with vitamin C, that's what it was um, uh, commercialized for, it contains 24 grams of sugar. So one serving is 24 grams, and that's equal to five teaspoons. So imagine one glass of this drink, you're already drinking five teaspoons of sugar. And your blood 
our blood, the normal blood level of sugar is only around 5 grams or 1 teaspoon. So drinking 5, five teaspoons is way too much already. Aside from that, we do want to make sure that the nutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, the fiber, we want them to be high as high as possible. So 20% and above is the ideal. So check on those percentages. When it comes to the ingredients, um, we should look at the ingredients and see if what is written is really expected of the product, you know? Like, is it really juice that's in here? Is it something else? And usually, the ingredients are written in the order of the largest to the smallest amount. So the first item is the one that's most in this, in this food item, in this um, yeah, product. So for this example, we see water, the first, and the second ingredient is cane sugar. The third ingredient is just the juice. So um, that tells you a lot about this product already. Is it really something worth buying or not? Other than that, try to check if there are additional additives or fillers that may not really be healthy for you. There. Next, step number three, choose whole food. And when we say whole food, these are um, the food that are in their most natural form as you can get. Right? More nutrients get stripped off as it goes through processing. And even and, and more so, um, artificial ingredients are also added into the food as they go through processing. So this means less nutrients, more artificial ingredients. That equates to not being full, not being satisfied, and that will make you eat more of that food item. So try to go for the more natural food as this contains most nutrients and also tends to be more filling. All right. So how do you know if your, what your, food, your food is um, whole food or not? Uh, just uh, time when it will rot. <laughs> Usually whole food tend to rot within a week, but if it's more than a week, then um, there, there, that means that there's a lot of uh, artificial stuff inside of that. Okay, so number four, count nutrients. Count nutrients more than calories. We want to, to do this because it's not really the ca calories that will support our function. It's the nutrients that will make things work properly. So what nutrients do we, do we want to keep in, um, in touch of is proteins, fats, carbohydrates, minerals, vitamins, and phytonutrients. So we don't need to memorize all the sources, but I'll give you a few tips on this. So when it comes to proteins, you can have this from lean meats, from fishes, from chicken, from eggs, poultry, but we also can have it from um, beans, from legumes, from nuts and seeds. And these are healthy sources as well of protein. And when it comes to protein, it's nice to have it in every meal so you can stabilize your blood sugar, especially in breakfast where usually a lot of people tend to skip their proteins there. Okay, so have it in every meal. Fats. So not all fats are bad for us. In, in fact, our brains are made out of 60% fat. So we really need fat in our bodies. Um, just make sure that the sources are healthy. And these sources are usually our fatty fish, our avocados, nuts, seeds, and even our extra virgin olive oil and coconut oil, unrefined oils there. Next, when it comes to carbohydrates, they're not also bad, but we need to choose the better kinds, the healthier kinds of carbohydrates. And these are those that are unrefined or minimally processed. So these include whole grains, root crops, beans and legumes, whole fruits and vegetables. So very simple, proteins, fats and carbohydrates. Just make sure that they're very quality, quality sources. Um, minerals and vitamins, we usually really get them from vegetables or plant food. So we do advise that um, if you can fill half of your plate with vegetables, just to make sure we have a variety of minerals and vitamins getting into our diet. Okay, I know it's challenging for some people to consume th that much veggies in one sitting. So if you're that kind of person, you can try maybe consuming it in the form of a smoothie, mix it in with some fruits, with your nuts and seeds. And this can actually already serve as like a meal for um, like a breakfast, lunch, or a snack, right? There. So if not, for kids especially, you can try giving them like a vegetable fruit popsicle or some soups, vegetable soups, or maybe also some uh, vegetable chips. There. Okay. So aside from that, um, I do encourage you to eat a rainbow, but not this rainbow, not the rainbow cake, more of the rainbow from plant food items. 
And as I mentioned, plant foods are where we get our minerals and vitamins, but not only that, the color is important and we call them phytonutrients. Each color has a specific benefit to the body. Like for example, red colored food items are great for the heart. Orange and yellow are great for the skin so that you have healthy skin. Um, green is for everything, actually maintaining your blood sugar, maintaining your cholesterol. Purple is also for your blood sugar levels and for healthy brain function and focus. So have a rainbow of these colors. In summary, when it comes to maintaining nutrient-dense meals, you can just refer to this checklist. So number one is eat whole and minimally processed food. Fill your plate with quality proteins, fats, and carbohydrates with at least, try at least 75 to 80% of your plate from plants. Add more color and vary your food items as much as you can. Don't, don't stick to just one. Try to vary them every day so that you get nutrients from other food items, okay? Lastly, and this is the last and I think most important tip is to pay attention. So digestion, I mentioned a while ago, begins in the mind and we call this a cephalic phase of digestion. 30 to 40% of digestive processes activate when we focus and pay attention to, your food, to our food. If we don't do this, we, get to, we don't get to absorb nutrients and the, you know, our body's malfunction because of poor nutrient um, intake. So what is mindful? What mindful are we talking about here? Mindful that we want is the one on the right side, the one who's eating on the table, focusing on their food, chewing well, chewing till it's um, more liquid in consistency before you swallow it. Um, and just really thinking about the flavors, the textures, enjoying the time with food, right? We want this mindful so that you can get the benefits of the food that you're eating. You can have a very healthy plate, but if you're not digesting and absorbing them, it's just going to go to waste. So we want this mindful, not mindful, where your mind is full of other things aside from food. So you have your um, phone with you, you're texting or you're watching TV or you're thinking about some other thing. That, that's not a healthy way to eat. So what you want to be is mindful, not mindful. Did I say that right? <laughs> well, you get me. You get me, right? Okay. So I get this question a lot like there are a lot of excuses or or valid reasons actually for not being eating healthy per se and um people say isn't healthy eating costly boring time consuming difficult costly yes it can be but it doesn't have to be it can be at the start especially if you're revamping your whole pantry and changing everything that would be costly but once you get through the habit and you start making mindful choices, ditch all those bad stuff, you tend to really put your money where the good things are. And that's not costly. That's sulit. We say it's sulit. Yeah, it's worth it, the, pay, the, the money that you're paying for these. Boring, it could be if you just keep eating salad, but it doesn't have to be. There are a lot of recipes that we can look into to make meals more exciting. And if you don't have any, um, if you're having a difficult time, well, feel free to check on Google, the internet, or even have a consultation with a nutritionist dietitian. We have a lot of um, ideas that we would be glad to share with you when it comes to meal prepping and preparing your food. Time consuming? This, I would say, yes, it is. It's gonna be time consuming to prepare your food, to think about your meals, to, to just plan everything ahead of time. It will be, but it will be worth it. And right, we, we make time for things that are important for us. So if food and eating healthy is important for you, we'll make time for it. Is it difficult? It will be at the start. But again, like any other habit, you know, it really is difficult at the start. And, and sometimes you will really fall in between. So progress doesn't, isn't a straight line. Progress can be going up and down. It fluctuates. For some people, progress can look like this, and that's okay. As long as we keep moving forward, making conscious decisions one step at a time, start today, and just keep swimming, as Dory says. Make those small little steps, and you will go so far when it comes to your diet and with your health. Okay? So I want to encourage you even right now, I gave you a few five tips that you can start with. And I do hope you choose just one, just one today and do it now. And, and that would be a start of your health journey and healthy eating moving forward. Okay. Um, these tips that I just said, these are what I can say are generally healthy for everyone. 
Okay, so everyone can do this and they're generally healthy, but I want to remind you as well that everyone is unique. There may be specific dietary interventions that you, you will need that's just for you. And um, there's a lot of new sciences and technology that can help us identify our needs that are specific for us. We can check on your food sensitivities. We can look at your genes and how they affect your eating habits. We can check at the health of your gut and see if you're really digesting and absorbing food. We can check on the way you metabolize, if it's working properly, if there are things that we need to help you with, supplements or medications or treatments that you would need to help you function better. And this is what would make up a precision nutrition plate. So what I mentioned a while ago, those are just general recommendations. But if you want to take a step further, we can help you with that. And this is an open invitation for you if you need help with these and if you want to know more on what diet will really work for you specifically then um, we are open, our doors are open in life science and just feel free to message us and contact us if you need our help with this, this. So to wrap all things up, when talking about 21st century nutrition, the invitation here really is to leave the old ways of eating by instinct. Like when you look at the food item, you immediately dive into it and just grab it and indulge in it. No. The invitation here is to start owning and taking responsibility over your health and knowing more about yourself, knowing how your body works, and then make wise decisions, wise and informed decisions that would benefit you. Let's all start eating with our intellect and with our minds, okay? So I want to share this quote to end, to eat is a necessity, but to eat intelligently is an art. That's all for my talk today. Thank you everyone for listening. And I know we have an open forum in a bit. So if you have any questions, feel free to chat them in. Um, but that's all for now. Thank you for listening and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maddie. Um, that was really, really informative. Um, I'm sure there are a couple of questions here I wanted to go through with you. Um, do you wanna just stop share for a bit so we can, okay. Um, yeah, I, that mindful, yeah. F-U-L-L versus mindful, yeah. just one, right? Um, <laughs> I want to ask you, like, you talk about comfort food, and mm -hmm. and we there is a time and a place for that, right? But yeah. the, 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 the times, I guess, the comfort food tends to be high in sugar or mm -hmm. high in carbohydrates and all. And it's also that you, you take the food, you feel good only for a moment. Yes. And then with the sugar rush, you know subsides and everything yeah. you actually left with the feeling of a little bit of disgust and a yes. little bit of like you feel like beating yourself up mm. for actually giving mm. in to the bad food right How, what kind of mental <laughs> strategies can we use though to mm -hmm. you know to combat this to you yeah. know to, to confront this to yeah. avoid it basically yeah yeah well, well, thank you for that question. That is very valid. And it's a struggle for most people, right? Especially if you're going through so much stress. The really best way to go about this is to address the root cause of why you're feeling that. So try to address where the stress is coming from. Okay. Um, if you can't do that. So there are also stress management exercises like breathing exercises that can help calm your mind first and um, al alleviate the stress off you. And hopefully that would remove the cravings for these comfort food. But if it's really inevitable that you're, you're, you know, life happens and, and sometimes you can't stop it. Right. And you really want to crave for this comfort food. I think one mental exercise really that would help is to think about it. Like you mentioned, you eat the, those high sugary food. Will it really make you feel better? Will it really comfort you? So, right? It, it, if it doesn't in the long term, then why choose that food? Maybe there are other food items that will truly comfort you in a biochemical level. So there are those food, the food items that I mentioned a while ago that are for the mood, that slide deck there. Those are food items that you can choose over your usual comfort food cravings. And those will truly comfort you for the long term. And will eventually help not just your emotions, but your physical, mental, everything. Yeah, I hope I hope that answered your question. Yeah, no, and ideally we're supposed to get our nutrition from food, right? But yes. sometimes we we don't get all the nutrients we need mm -hmm. in a meal or or mm -hmm. in the course of the day. So we yeah. also tend to supplement. Yeah. So um, are are there 
do you do you agree like like supplementing is something that we we need to do if we're not getting all the nutrients we need mm. or is it like a gray area um, well as a nutritionist i do would prioritize food first so we will work with the client um, let's try with your schedule, with your capacity, if we can get nutrients from food. But it also depends on what you're going through at the moment. If your situation really calls the need for supplements, then we will, we can supplement. We won't hesitate to give supplements if it's what you need for that moment, but we won't depend on it. We don't want you to be taking these pills for the long term, but eventually empower you and teach you to make the healthy eating decisions so that you won't really need them anymore. And you can just sustain yourself with the food. Which, which contains more nutrients than a supplement can because we don't really know yet what, how much nutrients are in a certain food item. So food contains like these synergistic effects with nutrients. So um, that's better than having like a, a single supplement form of a nutrient and that won't interact with other nutrients and create that compounding effect to the body. So um, food is still the best as much as we can. But if the situation calls for a supplement, then we'll use that, but not depend on it. Eventually, our goal is to graduate from the supplementation and um, stick to food. Yeah. And what if um, you have allergies or food mm-hmm. sensitivity? So how, mm-hmm. let's say, for example, something like broccoli, for example, mm-hmm. or, or in my case, apparently I, I can't take spinach mm-hmm. or I don't metabolize spinach properly. And mm-hmm. I love spinach, right? It's full mm-hmm. of nutrients, good mm-hmm. nutrients. Yeah, it is. What do you do when, you're, when the vegetable you like, you can't eat? You know. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, well, if it is a like a true food allergy that you have to avoid forever, like it's really something that causes you negative reactions every time, there are still other vegetables that we that we can explore having that are of the same nutritive value as the ones that you mentioned, like example, spinach, malungay or moringa actually has more iron than spinach, and it's something that is underrated, right? Or or we just uh, take for granted because it's all around us but but there there are other alternatives that we can explore um that's why i did mention variety is important so let's let's look at the other vegetables out there um not not focusing on just one single food item and you you'll be surprised you might even like the other alternatives as well in the case though of um, like food sensitivities that um there it depends um because how we go about food sensitivities, we avoid the food items for a short period of time first to allow your gut to heal so that you can uh, tolerate these food again. But once you reintroduce them back to your diet and you're still sensitive to it, that's the only time we really avoid it forever. But if after the elimination phase and you eat it again and you can tolerate it, then it's fine to bring it back to your diet again. So in those, it depends on what kind of reaction you're having to the food. Um, but in general, we explore the alternatives. And there are a lot of alternatives that we can look into. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, see, Carlo, I see your, your hand raised. Do you have a question? Can I turn on your mic? Hi. Hi, Bambina. Hi, Maddy. I no, I just wanted to share my experience. Um, you know, I also went in, I did the elimination diet. Um, was not keen on doing it because I'm a big carnivore and um, I own a fast food chain, right? Serving burgers and fried chicken and, and ribs, right? So, but I, ha- I got myself to do it for, for 21 days. And, um, and that started my plant-based diet. So after 21 days, it was the most life-changing experience for me, right? So I continued with a, with a, with a diet for three months. And um, my, my body fat went down from 13% to 9%. I added one kilo of muscle mass and I lost 10 pounds of weight. And not only that, I just had all this energy I never thought I had. And so I could run faster, be in the gym longer. And, um, and it was just really a, uh, a life-altering experience, this plant-based uh, journey that I've been in. And, um, and people always ask, where do you get your protein from? And you mentioned you know, all these other sources of protein, like legumes, uh, nuts, tofu. But I do supplement with plant-based protein powder no? because I go to the gym. But, um, you know, I do get the cravings as well, Bambina. And, um, 
usually it's it's be, sometimes it's because you're dehydrated. Cravings actually also also happen because um, you're you're probably not enough. You're not taking enough water. Um, so I hydrate myself, and the craving goes away, right? Or if I really need something sweet, there you can go to healthy options. Sorry for plugging healthy options, but then there are health bars, uh, protein bars that use um, stevia or monk fruit as sweetener, and they're super low or zero glycemic index, so they don't they don't um, um, your blood sugar doesn't go up. And and so for me, the plant for somebody who's predominantly uh, carnivore to have undergone to still be in this plant di plant based diet predominantly it's a life changing experience and uh, elimination diet is is the, is a good place to start because that's what really changed everything for me just wanted to share that Mambina and Madi thank yeah, you yeah no thank you but Carla thank can you. I ask you didn't do the food allergy um I any, you know what you didn't, you didn't test for food sensitivities. No, you know, I have not come around to doing that. I will go to life science because that's been on my list of uh, things to do. So yes, Mali, uh, expect me to visit you at the life science uh, sometime soon for this. I'll see you there. Paul. Yeah. <laughs> so inspiring, Carlo. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. that. Thank you for yeah. sharing. Yeah. Congratulations. What do you now when you do meat? Do you, Sorry? do you have any cravings for steak? What, no, what do you, you know, do? yeah, so so to make, I mean, um, I'm what you call meat-free, Bambina. So okay. whenever whenever meat is free, I eat it. Ah. So, so so when people invite me to, to their homes or or uh, they invite me out for dinner and, and, there, and there are no choices, no plant-based choices, so I have to eat meat as long as it's free. But at home, we're 100% plant-based. Wow, and and how has it impacted your business? You're still oh yeah. Meat. Well, yeah. my business is still you know it's still carnivore, predominantly meat. So I can't change anything about that. But then my plan, my my midterm plan is to slowly introduce healthy meals into our menu. Great. Okay. Well, you'll be doing everyone also a favor. I mean, it's it's always good to make that shift. You know, eventually. Absolutely. And, and yeah, one more thing, and one more thing I want to share, um, and I, I don't know if uh, this is really supported by science. Um, whenever I eat plant-based, I don't have to eat too much. The volume is so much, I mean, the volume of food that I intake um, that's plant-based versus, let's say, um, meat is so much less, but I get full just the same. And I, I think it's because of the nutrient density. Am I right, Maddie? Mm -hmm. Because you get as yes. much nutrients from much less in plant-based. Yes. So you yes. feel full, right? And you don't have to eat too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that, that's right, actually. Um, one aspect to cravings is um, your body is actually craving for nutrients. So if you supply the nutrients that your body needs, um, it means you won't crave for as much. So even the fiber you mentioned, uh, uh, plant-based, uh, diet is actually very high in fiber and that's very filling and and it, it keeps you full for longer than than without the fiber so yeah that's oh, correct that's it so thank you i thank you for allowing me to share um i'm really a big fan of this so I, I, also just one last thing your presentation is one of the best i've seen i've watched a lot of youtube videos and yours is, you. is it's just um it's very concise but um straight to the point and you explain it very very well so thank, thank you so you, much. Maddie. Thank you. Thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carlo. Really nice to hear that from you. Um, I think we have a couple of more questions. Um, I think because it's quite a common, a common condition, which I wasn't mm -hmm. aware about, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Yes. And I have heard stories of, of women suffering from this and mm -hmm. using nutrition instead mm -hmm. to, yeah. you know, to, to treat this syndrome mm -hmm. so how does nutrition actually help this help. yeah in the case of PCOS um, it varies per individual where it's coming from the cause of the, their PCOS but one one of the common things that we see is um, a poor management of blood sugar so as long as we get to stabilize the blood sugar levels, having a more plant-based type of diet, removing food sensitivities, or even those common inflammatory food like those in the a comprehensive elimination diet that Sir Carla did, even just removing those can already help lower the inflammation that's driving the poor metabolism 
of sugar in the body and it can also help with PCOS. Another aspect to it is um, sometimes uh, those with PCOS have um, a poor detoxification mechanism in their body. So there are certain toxins that they intake through the environment um, and, and their bodies aren't, could be genetically, they are not able to remove those toxins out of the body well, or they're not feeding themselves with nutrients that would help them detoxify that those, those stuff. So there are certain food items like cilantro and parsley that are really great in detoxification. So um, yeah, those food items may be able to help you. Aside from trying to stabilize your blood sugar, cutting down on too much um, unrefined starches, uh, refined starches, I mean. So yeah, th those would help with uh, no, PCOS. And um, I think one of the things you, you also uh, mentioned earlier in passing was, again, we talk about the mental aspect of nutrition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also the need to be kind to yourself yes. because you know, we're, we're a little bit hard on ourselves as well because mm -hmm. we also want, we want to be healthy. I mean, everybody yeah. does, right? Getting yeah. to that stage is so challenging sometimes for, for all of us. And, you know, you, you, like, like you said, the path to progress is not actually a direct line, mm -hmm. but it's full of, you know, yeah. <laughs> all the other paths and all that. Yeah. 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 So how do you, how do you motivate yourself all the time? Because it's so mm -hmm. hard to like, you know, like the beginning of the year, right? Yeah. Everybody yeah. says, oh, can you, yeah. this is my resolution yeah. I'm going to start. <laughs> and then you fall off the wagon so quickly yeah. because everybody's still eating post-holiday yeah. food or, or whatever it may mm -hmm. be. Or if you go on holiday and, mm -hmm. you know, you, you decide, oh, I'm, you know, yeah. I, let's say I'm in Italy, how can I not eat this? And, mm -hmm. you know, all the pasta and everything. Mm -hmm. So how, I don't know, how do you, at what point, though, I mean, the body is quite an amazing thing because you can always reset. Yeah. But there's also yeah. the fear that if you keep abusing your body and keep saying to yourself, oh, I can reset, I can reset, yeah. I can reset. Mm -hmm. you know, at the same time, because you're taking all these foods, that organ, you know, your organs are yes. being also, um, Burdened, what's yeah. the word? Mm -hmm. Yeah, burden. And, you know, especially excess consumption of sugar and yeah. carbohydrate. Yeah. I, I hear you. I hear you with that. Uh, I, I went through my own health journey. It wasn't easy for me. I took the food sensitivity test way back 2015, but I could say it's only like around 2018 that I got to follow it perfectly. <laughs> so it does take time, you know, for some people, they can immediately do it. But for others, it's, it's difficult because um, it's not in their personality or the situation doesn't allow for it. So everything is valid. The important thing, though, and that's why I started with the very first tip is to know where you're at, know your goal, know why you're doing it. You're the, the fact that you're here listening this webinar, or the fact that you're even considering changing your diet, that, that means that you have a reason for it. And know that reason, write it down, put it in a frame so that hang it on your wall so that you always see it so that when you get demotivated, you can go back to, why am I doing this again? What, what am I looking forward to? What is the person, who, who do I want to see in the future? And, and, and hopefully that would also be the motivation that, that um, would keep you moving forward. Or, or maybe the motivation can be beyond you. Like some people say they want to eat healthier and be healthier because they want to live longer to see their grandkids play and play with them, have the energy to play with them. They, they, maybe they want to do certain things that can, they can only do if they, they're healthy and that. So try to dig that in inside of you, um, what your motivation is, why you're doing it. Um, that's number one. Another thing to that, to support that, is to be accountable. So it's difficult if, like, for example, I, I, I'll just say, uh, okay, I'm doing this because I, I want to see my grandkids, for example, in the future and play with them, and then just keep it to myself. And then, and then nobody would keep me accountable for what I said. Then it's going to be harder for me to regulate myself um, always, right? Because we'll always have those down times and that the times when we'll just give up along the way. So there has to be that accountability group, that accountability system that you surround yourself with. It could be your friend, could be your family. It could be a health practitioner. So that's also part of what we do. We, we keep our patients accountable for what they said. Oh, you said you're going to do this. Oh, how are we going to and we help them. We help them um, know their obstacles and help them as well overcome them. 
so that they, they could be the best that they could be. Uh, the frustration is real. I, I hear that. I understand that. But um, the accountable is also, accountability is also one big way that we can combat that frustration and that, that sense of wanting to give up. Um, so, so that's another one. Uh, I think that's it. Know, know your motivation. Be accountable. And I think the last figure is really just decide. Make that conscious decision that, that nobody's making it for you except you alone. The decision to change things. It's really you, your decision. So be, be accountable to yourself for that as well, that you're doing that for yourself. Yeah. And um, th those are really good tips to live by, actually. And life science, if I'm not mistaken, has, at the, well, apart from the nutritional counseling, mm -hmm. you can also prep meals, right? Prepare you meals. Or you have a, um, a grocery or... Right now, we do, we, we've been scouting um, certain food um, establishments around the metro to see where our clients can get food. So we do give um, like direction like, oh, you, we found this store, you can, you can go here. Uh, we're actually very open to add up to our list of stores because of, we need them. <laughs> we need, I want to say, Sir Carlo, if you're going to put up that plant-based <laughs> food food establishment I I'd push you for that we need a lot of you know, a lot of uh, food establishments who would advocate for healthy eating because a lot of people really need them so um right now we don't have like our own food delivery yet but we are um partnering with those who can who already have the business and who are able to modify diets the way that we we would hope for each client so we are at that stage at this moment be great. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the good thing is that you're equipping us with, you're making the effort to equip us with all the tools that we need yeah. to be, you know, be successful in this. So thank you so much, um, Maddie, and for everyone here. Before we end the session, can I just um, announce some of the features of our partnership with Life Science? We've had a longstanding partnership with Life Science and, you know, which um, functions on the, well, which, whose approach is based on functional medicine to help us achieve optimal, um, optimal health. And so we extend to our members 10% discount on current services for consultation, consultations, interventions, and diagnostics um, for life science centers and skin and nutrition. 3% uh, of this goes to our corporate social responsibility program. And life science also offers consultations and tests such as the Genomine mental health map. Um, so have you ever wondered why you are snacking too much? Do you also find yourself having difficulty sleeping at night? Do you get easily distracted at work? If you want to find out if you are genetically predisposed to this, then take the first step in understanding your mental health through the Genomind Mind Health Map. This tests for specific genetic variants that have been shown to influence the seven core genetic mental health capabilities, including mood, eating behavior, social behavior, stress and anxiety, focus and memory, sleep habits, and substance use. It analyzes 38 genetic variants and their influence on 29 mental health traits. It produces seven in-depth interactive reports that identify your predispositions. It gives genetically based recommendations and resources for you. It also comes with a 30 minute genetic interpretation with a Genomine Brain Trust advisor. So you get one free consultation of your choice, which includes mind and talk therapy, life science health check, or life science nutrition consult. Um, this helps you understand the role that this genetic mechanisms play in your mental health so that you can be proactive and you can take accurate and decisive action for your mental wellness. So we have a short video to show you just for, um, to give you a bit more information about the Genomine mind map. Can we just cue that? In this day and age, your mental wellness is as important as your physical health. A lot of unexplainable thoughts and emotions are affecting our daily lives. You may be at a loss with how to deal with them or where they're coming from. So you continue to endure through these without knowing or having a cause. Now there is a science-based way that looks at your genetics in order to find probable causes of what's happening with regards to your mental health. 
Learn more about how you respond to your mood so you can better assess what triggers your responses. You get to see any mental health predispositions that will affect your focus and memory. All this and more comes from the Genomind Mental Health Map. One of the keys is inside your genetic makeup. You get a full analysis of your seven core genetic mental health capabilities. Each core genetic mental trait will help you gain insights and provide options that will be thoroughly explained by our experts. Now you can have a more accurate basis and you won't be alone. Let our experts guide you on your mental health journey. Visit our website to get more information and book a consultation now. Ask us about the Genomind Mental Health Map at the Life Science Center. Also, uh, I hope you, uh, if you want to make an appointment for that, please, um, you can contact us at um, events at manilahouseinc.com or ask at lifescience.ph. And you can also contact Rochelle Vicente at 0917-536-5784 to book the services. Manila House members who wish to avail of any of the services above should mention the code MH-LSC when, when requesting this. Um, and a cop they may ask, Life Science may ask for a copy of your membership card just to finalize the booking process. So once the email has been sent or a call has been made, the current processes of LSC in offering the services will be applied. The code mh Dash LSC that Manila House members include in their emails or mention over the phone will be used by LSC to track the rebate. Oh, this will be used to track the rebates that are given um, to Manila House at the end of the offer. And they also, as, as we mentioned earlier, there's um, a percentage of this set, um, you know, uh, which uh, helps to um, fund uh, corporate social responsibility programs. And we also have supplements, as, as many of you know, because some of you have been ordering through us, that you can order through our website. And um, we have a full number of, uh, we have a, a huge um, kind of array of supplements for various needs, including um, immune defense and um, certain um, nutrients that may be lacking in your, um, in your diet. Um, also, please um, mention the code um, mh dash lsc supp um, for this uh, for these orders. Um, so I think that's it for now. Maybe um, Dr. Madi, can I ask you to come back for some final words? Dr. Madi, are you? Oh, Madi, do you want to just? Um... Okay. I think she's. She's probably gone already, but okay, on behalf of Manila House, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today and um, for making, um, hopefully, life science will be a part of your health um, and wellness journey in the future, and there's no better time to start um, than now, and um, as mentioned, um, it may not be a smooth road, it may be a bumpy road, but we'll get there, and life science will help you get there. Um, please let us know as well. If you'd like to um, get in touch with Life Science, please contact us at events at manilahouseinc.com. So thank you for joining us today. This talk will be up on YouTube in a couple of days. And if you'd like to request a copy of the slides, please please drop us a line and we'll, we'll get them for you. So on behalf of Manila House, this is Bambina Olivares saying um, good afternoon and thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.